Welcome to Blind Ability's coverage of the Blinded Veterans Association 2017 National Convention. Coming to you from the Hyatt Regency Downtown Hotel in sunny Jacksonville, Florida. Join Pete Lane as he interviews guests, marketeers, and vendors from the exhibit hall floor at the convention. And now let's learn a little bit about the Blinded Veterans Association, BVA. Chartered by the U.S. Congress in 1958, the Blinded Veterans Association has continuously been a strong voice for the nation's blinded veterans. The BVA is proud to take responsibility in assisting blinded veterans and their families in returning to their rightful place in the community by providing them useful information and practical help. The Blinded Veterans Association was uh, founded by approximately 100 war blinded veterans from World War II uh, that believed that there should be an organization of blinded veterans. The Blinded Veterans Association was established specifically to promote the welfare of blinded veterans by providing answers and resources to help them deal with the discouragement and frustration they often face. By working closely with the Department of Veterans Affairs, BVA assures that all blinded veterans have access to excellent blind rehabilitation training, technology, and counseling. The BVA has field representatives that live and work in seven regions across the country providing inspiration, encouragement, and guidance through the entire benefit claims process. Because they themselves are blinded veterans who have been through similar experiences, they understand the complexities and emotions behind the process. Field representatives play a critical part of being able to provide information to blinded veterans on what benefits they're entitled to. If you or someone you know is a blind or visually impaired veteran, Call 1-800-669-7079 or write to Blinded Veterans Association, 477 H Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20001. For more information, please visit bva.org, the Blinded Veterans Association, helping veterans and their families meet the challenges of blindness. The BVA 72nd National Convention slated for August 14, 18, 2017. Several education sessions to be held Monday, August 14, and Tuesday, August 15, are entirely new. We are especially pleased to have BVA members leading these sessions. National Secretary Paul Mims will be leading a discussion on home automation while Mark Armstrong from the Georgia Regional Group will share his knowledge on deafblind communication skills and technology. Larry Bostetter of the Southern California Regional Group will lead three intriguing sessions, dealing with change to vision impairment, overcoming communication challenges for the visually impaired, and the ABCs of strategic planning for regional groups. Waterway Transit via St. John's River Taxi provides downtown transportation to and from the Hyatt Regency Riverfront Hotel, Friendship Fountain, and the Stadium. The Exhibit Hall, sponsored this year by LSNS and Freedom Scientific slash AI squared slash Optelic, will be open August 15th, 16. We have several exciting exhibitors already lined up for this year. Convention attendees in search of a mix of historic neighborhood homes, quaint shops, and unique dining options may wish to visit the Avondale neighborhood along the banks of the St. John's River. BVA National Headquarters will once again have a convention claims office on site Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to check the status of VA claims, assist with new ones, and provide guidance on gathering the necessary information in order to file them. We wish to provide extra service to you and expand our one-stop shop for your convenience. Planned off-site trips include a baseball game to see the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp, the AA Southern League affiliate of the Miami Marlins, and a tour of the Anheuser-Busch Brewery. The Jacksonville area also offers great opportunities for a round of golf or exploration of the city through the JAXL trail to sample the local breweries. We are excited to see you and celebrate together 72 years of blinded veterans helping blinded veterans. Hi folks, Pete Lane. I'm at the BVA convention here in sunny and hot Jacksonville, Florida. I'm on the exhibit hall floor, but I ran into a virtual friend of mine, Paul Mims. Good morning, Paul. How are you? Oh, good morning. I'm doing great. Paul is the National Secretary for the Blinded Veterans Association, and I know Paul because he is an IRA explorer, an IRA user. Tell us a little bit about what you think about IRA, Paul. I think IRA is wonderful, and uh, there's a lot of things I like about their product and the concept through which they develop it. They're actually taking things that already exist, and they're building them onto their basic product so that they're creating a multifunctional product with a wide scope of function. 
and it's not costing the end user more and more and more and more for licenses and other things that cost more. So some of the things that they've got coming are really exciting, but what it already does is actually pretty exciting. I would agree, the basic functions, the uh, navigation, and virtually any task, I always refer to it as no task too large and no task too small. But I yeah, agree. some of the new stuff coming along, artificial intelligence and Chloe. The yeah, approach is that we go to market with a human in the loop. Our human agents are constantly interacting with users, gathering information, and utilizing their AI-enabled dashboards to monitor, gather, and provide information. While delivering the AI service via the dashboard, those agents are validating AI results for specific tasks with users. When accuracy for such autonomous tasks hits a certain threshold, that capability will be available for the user directly on his or her AI smart glass device through interaction via a dialogue system, similar to Alexa or Siri. The AI autonomous agent, Chloe, is named after a main character from the hit TV series, 24. In short, Chloe will be the first AI engine that learns to interact with the physical world. Like I said before, we tend to think a lot about the future. We believe the future starts now, with Aero. I'm looking forward to that. A lot of people have concern about adding the new features and then having to use more minutes, but Chloe is actually going to be offline. That's one good thing. Right, right. And they're going to interface with uh, Blind Square GPS in the near future. Can't wait. Yeah. So that's going to enhance both experiences when you're able to put both of them together. I would just say, right now, I don't know what else is coming. Yeah. You know, yeah. beyond that. I know. But, but they've got more stuff coming. Oh, they sure do. Suman and his team are always thinking of new things and establishing and creating new partnerships. Right. I can't wait for the uh, priority AT&T. The my fives, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, Paul, tell us about BVA, what the organization does, and what this convention means to you. Well, in short, the BVA is the primary an original organization, veteran service organization, that advocates almost exclusively for rights, benefits, and services on behalf of blind veterans. You know, all the other service organizations may get on board with what we're doing, but we do it spe specifically aimed at blind veterans. We've been around since 1945. We were chartered by Congress in 1954 to do what we do. And we've been effective in doing a lot of things over the years. In fact, the BVA is actually responsible for giving the input the VA that resulted in the VA Blind Rehabilitation System. Really? And since doing that, beginning with the Heinz Blind Rehab Center, Maywood, Illinois, outside Chicago, right. okay, we now have 13. One of those in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and 12 on the continental U.S. We started up the VIS program by our recommendations, which are the Vision Impairment Services team coordinator at all of the medical centers. And after that, later came the BROS project, Blind Rehab Outpatient Specialists. Okay. And so those are like, you know, more like rehab teachers. They go out to the veterans' home and help them with stuff more so on site as opposed to, you know, what they learn in the Blind Rehab Center. So BVA actually represents any blinded veteran, regardless of how they became blind. So any misconceptions out there that you had to be service-related blindness no, is not true. Not true. In fact, at this point, because of the medical advances that have been made, coming out of the research right. that's been done with traumatic brain injuries and penetrating eye injuries and head injuries and, and the like, a lot more people are surviving on the battlefield. And even if they suffer eye damage, they're still coming out as survivors rather than battlefield casualties. Wonderful. Yeah. And you know, with what they're able to do in battlefield medicine, they're actually able to save sight. Remarkable. You know, right on the battlefield. Sure. Sure. So you're a strong advocate with the VA for any kind of veterans' benefits. How would a listener? get in touch with you and check out the BVA if they're not already familiar? Of course we have a website. It's at www.bva.org. bva.org. Number to our national office, 202-371-8880. Excellent, Paul. We've been speaking with Paul Mims. Paul is the National Secretary for the BVA. 
and I understand you've been nominated and will be running for president in an upcoming election later this week. Yes, sir. Well, we wish you lots of luck with that, Paul. Thanks so much for chatting with us this morning. Uh, thank you so much for letting me chat with you. Excellent. Okay. Hi, Pete Lane again with Blind Abilities. I am at the BVA National Convention here in Jacksonville. And right now I'm talking with Chuck Miller. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning. Chuck, you're here as a blinded veteran. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your situation and why you're here at the BVA National Convention? Okay, so I'm a 28-year Army veteran and I have uh, retinitis pigmentosa and uh, I've been blind for about 15 years. And one of the things that I do is I do a lot of adventures all over the country. About uh, two years ago, I went to the summer sports clinic in San Diego and I met an organization called the Warrior Sailing Program. And um, they invited me to come to St. Petersburg, Florida for a basic course on learning how to sail. So I went there and I, I just loved it. And uh, it's very unique because they have veterans with all disabilities and they really do teach you how to sail. So I loved it so much, they invited me to come back in this past March to the advanced course. And when I was at the advanced course, they offered the opportunity for me to get certified as a sailor. I took the test and it's a two part test where you take a written test, but you also take a sailing test. And I passed both of them with flying colors. So I'm now the first blind veteran to be certified as a sailor. Congratulations. Tell us a little bit about the sailing test. What did that involve? The written test was uh, 100 questions, and I, my caregiver was allowed to read the questions to me, you know, under strict control, and I just was able to give the answer. And so I got a 95 out of 100 on the written. And then from there, you go out on the boat, and before you leave the dock, you have to describe to your coach every part of the boat, from the bow to the stern, uh -huh. from the port to the starboard, every, every part of the boat. The damn tough life, full of toil and strife, we whale a man under gold. And we don't give a damn when the gale is done, how hard. And then once you've done that successfully, you uh, raise the sails, you go out on the water, and you have to do all the points of sail successfully. And then the last part of the test is you have to do two man overboard drills and successfully recover the dummy without hitting the dummy with the boat. And uh -huh. I was able to do that, and uh, so then I became certified. So are you certified for any size vessel and in any type of weather condition or water? No, I'm only certified up to a 25-foot sailboat, but um, I can go on further now that I've got this certification. I can go on further to, uh, to get certified, you know, more and more as I want to. The only requirement, since I'm blind, is I do have to have a sighted person on the boat with right. me and that's required by the, uh, the Coast Guard. That, you know, someone cited has to be responsible for the boat. Are you certified to sail inland waters as well as ocean waters? Yes, yes I am. Cool. And I've done, I've done a couple of races. I, I did uh, Charleston Race Week back in April, and uh, I was on an 84-foot sailboat, and I got to steer the boat during the race across the finish line four days in a row. That was very Wow, cool. how large a crew? Uh, there was eight of us, all of us disabled. Amazing. Great stuff, Chuck. Tell us about BVA. What does BVA do for you and how are you enjoying the convention? Well, I'm a lifetime member and um, I think that the BVA is important because it gives veterans the opportunity to be with other blind veterans. And when you come here, you get lots of information about you know current events, what's going on with the VA, what's going on with your local chapters and all that. Plus, they have this uh, big exhibit hall with all these vendors here that show all the new, the newest technology for, for blind people. For instance, you know we're standing here at the IRA booth. That's a wonderful new technology, and there's several others here that are similar, but they, you know, they just help help the blind person enhance their life. And you're an IRA user? Yes, I am. For how long now? Uh, three months. How do you like it? I love it. I tell everybody that um, it's the most independent that I felt since I've been, been blind. When I put the glasses on and I have that agent talking to me, I feel totally independent. I feel like I can do anything. What type of use do you put it to? I'm an adventurer, so I do a lot of outdoor activities. So I've used it hiking in the woods. I've used it uh, on, when I cycle. I just got done cycling across the state of Iowa. 500 miles in seven days. Tandem? Yes. I used the glasses during that trip 
and uh, was able to talk to several agents and get lots of pictures of thousands of cyclists on the road and stuff. I kayak, I, I sail, I use it for both of those. And uh, this winter, winter I'm going to be doing uh, cross country and downhill skiing. I intend to take my glasses to that as well. Are you familiar with the Ski for Light event? I am. And I went there one year. This was my first year. And I'll be going back again this year. We're talking with Chuck Miller. Chuck, I've really enjoyed chatting with you. Thanks a million. Okay, thank you, Pete. This is Pete, Blind Abilities. Stay tuned. Take care. When we share what we see through each other's, each other's eyes, eyes, we can then, we can then begin, begin to bridge the gap between the limited, limited expectations and the reality, and the reality of blind abilities. The realities of blind abilities. Of blind abilities. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com. On Twitter at Blind Abilities. Download our app from the App Store, Blind Abilities, that's two words. Or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Thanks for listening.